Hey everyone, this is Kai Werner, and today I want to talk about error handling via dead letter queues in Apache Kafka. Error handling is a very important topic, and it's not handled by default, so you need to understand the strategies and the best practices. First of all, let's discuss what is a dead letter queue. This is an enterprise integration pattern. And here you see the standard picture of that. You can also go to that website for many more integration patterns. And that letter queue is one of the most important ones for production scenarios where you want to handle errors correctly. In this case, you see it's already an event-driven architecture where you have a sender and a receiver. And in the middle, you have the channel where the message is transported. And if something fails, you simply send this message not to the intended receiver, but to a dead letter channel to handle failures and error messages differently. Whatever that means, I will cover that later in this video. Now mapping this to Apache Kafka, the data streaming platform, it's actually pretty straightforward. So the sender in this case is a Kafka producer which can be any kind of Kafka client, like a Java application or Python or Java script, or use a connector with a REST HTTP call, or maybe a connector from another system like an MQ or a database with change data capture. It's always abstracted in Kafka then, so that you have the Kafka message with a header and with a body and with some metadata. And based on that then, you can send the data directly to the Kafka consumer, but you should make sure that you only send good quality data because otherwise the consumers will fail. And in a microservice architecture or data mesh, you typically have multiple consumers of the same data, where some are real time, some are batch and some are APIs. But this is really one of the key values of Kafka to decouple the systems have their own domains with their own technology and APIs, but they all consume from the same channel. In the Kafka world, a Kafka topic. So then you can also send the data to another Kafka topic if it fails, so that the intended receiver is only receiving good data. The big problem by default, you need to implement all of that by yourself. This is still important and many people do it like that. But there is many other built-in options that you can leverage to solve the error handling more out of the box or with specific frameworks that help you. And I want to show you a few examples here. First of all, if you build a new Kafka project, you actually should never start without schemas. A schema registry is the foundation of most critical Kafka projects because you define the structure and the metadata of the messages. And with that, you can ensure good data quality. And this is also the foundation for good data governance across the end-to-end -end data pipelines. This is an example of a data contract we have built with Confluent within the offering where we can configure data contracts with schemas and with additional rules and integrity constraints and policies. But you could do the same also with other schema registries. While I would say Confluent Schema Registry, which is available for free, is the de facto standard in the market. There's obviously other ones and they have uh, different features, so you need to check them out. In the commercial offering of Confluent, like Confluent Cloud, you get a lot of these things out of the box, including the data contract configuration, the data portal on top of that for self-service, access control, audit logs, and so on. But just to take a look at an example here, the main point about the data contract in a Kafka topic is that you define some kind of validation and policy mechanism. Like in this case, we define the data contract based on the metadata and what to do if some validation fails. So we define some policies and rules. And in this case, if you take a look at the bottom right, you see a rule set. And with this, then you can define a condition and implement an action. And in this case, as you see here, we say if the size of the message of a specific attribute is nine, then everything is good. And if it's not nine, 
then on the failure you send this message to another Kafka topic using the dead letter queue capability. This means that the consumers on the right side in the architecture only get good data quality. Other messages that fail will send to the letter queue instead. And this is the main idea, no matter if you use it like in this case with the schema registry and Confluent or with any other framework or solution, or if you build that by yourself. Now, there is other options built into Apache Kafka. So in Apache Kafka's Kafka Connect framework, you can directly handle malicious or wrong messages with the built-in dead letter queue feature. So in that case, you mean it means like when you use a connector and get data from a source, here in this case at the top, then if a validation fails, then you can directly send it to a dead letter queue from the Kafka Connect framework. This is a great um, solution if you use Connect and one more option. To show you one concrete example here, you get data in, in the Afro format. And actually, if it is Afro what is coming in, in the message, you directly send it to the consumer topic. However, if it is a JSON message, the consumer cannot handle that. So you need to send that to a dead letter queue, which is another Kafka topic. In Kafka Connect, this is built in, so you can just configure it like that. And then from the Kafka dead letter queue topic, you need to transform the data again, for example, with uh, Kafka Streams one-liner or with Apache Flink and Flink SQL, just to write a one-liner to transform Afroformat into JSON and then send that message into the consumer topic. In Kafka Streams, the open source stream processing library in Java, which is part of Apache Kafka. There's also work going on in the KIP, the Kafka improvement proposal, to add out of the box dead letter queue support into Kafka streams. This is ongoing work right here now and will hopefully be soon part of the framework. Now, no matter how you implement the strategy for the validation with schemas and data contracts, the other important question is, what do you do with the messages in the dead letter queue for error handling? And there's a few strategies. Here you see the most common examples. Reprocess data. That's, well, I would say maybe the most common one, but this doesn't make much sense if the message structure is wrong and you simply cannot handle it because then you will fail every time. Therefore, there is other strategies like dropping the bad messages, just not using them. You could do advanced analytics, which in the end means you use another processing unit, ideally a stream processor like Kafka Streams or Apache Flink, because it then can continuously process the data on the fly while it is in motion, instead of just storing it in another database or data lake. And then you make the decision based on that logic, or maybe you even embed AI or machine learning into that workflow to improve the data quality, adjust the message, and then reprocess it. If it's a critical error, you might even stop the workflow because something is completely wrong and you normally don't get wrong messages in. Or you might just ignore it. That's another option. You can choose per business case what strategy you implement for error handling. In most of the solutions or cloud services, you have different options to select from, or you need to write some custom logic. It's also important to emphasize when not to use a dead letter queue with Kafka and with data streaming in general. First, back pressure handling. That doesn't make much sense because if you get a failure for a message and you send it and try again and again, you will fail again and again if it cannot be handled. So back pressure handling, Kafka is great for that because it persists messages in the event store, but the consumer needs to decide when and how to consume. So back pressure handling is not something what a dead letter queue can help with. And the same for connection failures. If a system cannot do more than X connections, well, using a dead letter queue and trying to connect again and again will still fail. So these are some anti-patterns which I've seen being implemented in the real world and they failed, of course. 
Talking about real world examples, there's plenty of success stories available where you can learn more how other companies across all industries implemented error handling with dead letter queues using Apache Kafka and data streaming. These are just three screenshots from three companies. Uber, the ride-hailing service, which is very well known for extreme scale innovation and using Kafka at its limits. You can see, however, also two examples from financial services companies, Santander Bank, which is a more traditional, larger bank in Europe, and Robinhood, which is obviously a not a traditional bank, but this is really more like a neobank, a startup for trading and so on in the US, which is built more in a digital native way. No matter which one you take a look at, the tech giant, the cloud native one, a brand new digital native bank, or a traditional bank with Santander, they all solve the problems in a similar way. They implement dead letter queues with Kafka and have their own strategies for doing retries and consumptions and how to persist the data in the dead letter queue with a different retention time and how to handle the consumer and so on. I have the links in here. So these are three great examples to learn how other organizations implement dead letter queues with very different products and with own implementations all around Apache Kafka and stream processing. I hope this was a, ho a helpful video so that you can learn more about error handling strategies using the dead letter queue enterprise integration pattern with Apache Kafka and data streaming. In summary, schemas and data contracts are the most important piece to get the enterprise architecture right around Apache Kafka to ensure that your applications only get good data quality. Feel free to follow me and stay in touch on LinkedIn or via my newsletter or these YouTube videos. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Kai Werner.